Technology stocks had a strong start to the year after a pretty challenging 2022. But could that run continue amid some signs of slowing growth? Joining us now to discuss, Kathy Wood, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at ARK Invest. Kathy, it's great to have you on the program with us. Thank you, Greg. I'm very happy to be with you. Technology has been a very interesting space. Let's start off a little bit about talking about the investment uh, philosophy at ARK. If you're thinking about technology, what kind of uh, thinking are we doing here? Are we doing long-term thinking? Yes, uh, ARC's uh, investment time horizon is five years. So yes, long-term, and uh, that's somewhat contrarian in this market, uh, but we think it's very important to keep uh, our eyes on the prize and, and do deep research on how technology is going to evolve. And we think it's going to evolve very quickly uh, during the next few years. All right, as we talk about this quick evolution, I want to talk about some of the things that perhaps you have your eye on. Everyone has been talking for several months now about chat GPT. Really at the core of that, we're talking about artificial intelligence and people saying that the changes there could be swift. What are you anticipating in this space? Well, uh, we've been uh, doing research on this space ever since ARC uh, was founded in uh, 2014. And uh, we think it's terrific that finally uh, something in the innovation space like chat GP, ha, GPT has captured uh, both the consumer and the business imagination and, and is really helping people understand that uh, the world uh, of innovation is changing very quickly and the changes are pretty profound. Uh, I'm not sure if you've experimented with it, uh, but from an educational point of view, it's going to change education. It's going to change work completely, uh, even uh, with uh, er in areas like uh, developers, engineering. Uh, we're seeing coding productivity go up twofold within less than a year. Uh, and we actually think that could go up tenfold. And of course, that's been an area of great labor shortages. So uh, I know there was also an announcement to, today, IBM said it was going to hire no more people in the back office. Uh, and so for back office work, uh, chat GPT and AI generally uh, is probably going to take the place of of human beings. But it's in that regard, it's going to take people out of you know, some areas that are tedious, shall we say, and create other opportunities that we think are going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, because that, I mean, that when the discussion is had around artificial intelligence, obviously there's excitement about what it can deliver. And I I've, have experimented with some of these apps that you were talking about, but there's also, you know, a bit of fear and trepidation among people about a change of this scale, a wholesale change almost, uh, could be pretty disruptive for society. Uh, I think you're right, and I think that uh, we're going to need uh, retraining and re-education, uh, but these, these technologies are very exciting and also um, hold great promise for those who get on the right side of change. So uh, I think just experimenting with ChatGPT, you see the power uh, behind AI, and you can also see how you can learn a lot of these new technologies by yourself. For example, uh, with natural language processing, uh, we're all going to become programmers effectively. Um, and, and now, uh, a year ago, most people would think, oh, I could never be a programmer. But but uh, it, it, now we are, some of our analysts have used chat uh, GPT to design their own website, uh, copying another website. Uh, so, you know, and, and that's in less than a day. So it's, um, it's pretty provocative. I think you have to really want uh, to uh, engage with it and uh, e experiment. And uh, those with initiative and creativity, I think are going to have a lot of fun and uh, very enjoyable careers. That's one of the big themes right now, AI, but I am noticing now that we're in the thick of earnings season, we've had some of the heavyweight big tech names already report uh, that a lot of them like to talk up artificial intelligence as well. It's creeping into everyone's uh, statements and what they have to say about the future of the business going forward. Uh, what are you taking away so far from some of the big tech names we've seen this uh, earnings season? Well, I think that uh, the larger platforms, the larger social platforms are taking sh advertising share from the smaller ones. That's clear. And uh, it's been it, it's been a pretty uh, 
quick uh, shift, I would say. I think all of them were suffering last year and uh, the larger ones are now grabbing share. Uh, yes, AI is um, is uh, discussed quite uh, quite a bit in in most of these calls, uh, but we think uh, that it's a real risk to a company like Alphabet. Uh, I have never really enjoyed sh Google search myself. Uh, I, I wish it could be smarter. I'm sure we've all had that experience. Well, guess what? ChatGPT, once they start pulling it through and including uh, recent times as well, uh, I think is going to usurp uh, usurp search. Now, G Google or Alphabet says that it's all uh, it's on it, it's on the case, and it should be because it has some of the best AI experts in the world. It bought a company called DeepMind. Uh, but somehow they've been risk averse uh, and open AI has stolen the march with chat GPT. And then the other thing with plugins and chat GPT, uh, we're trying to understand what will be the impact on Apple. Um, you know, it, it could be that chat GPT uh, will disintermediate apps uh, with so-called plugins and and really just take us directly to wherever we want to go, whatever website we want to go. It'll it'll anticipate it. So um, I think uh, I think you know while mega cap tech recently has come on strong, um, we're looking at the the disruption and disintermediation risks uh, that they are facing here as well. Now, these are disruption, uh, obviously, that will have longer term effects on the tech sector, shape the tech sector going forward. Uh, right now, it's hard to ignore the fact that investors are concerned about slowing growth. We, we've heard that from some of the companies, too, in terms of their clients getting a little more cautious on spending in the cloud and some other areas. Also, what the Federal Reserve might deliver, what the interest rate path is going forward. Uh, what should we be thinking about for the rest of this year in terms of some of the volatility out there? Well, I I think that and and it's really uh, in the U.S. that we're seeing uh, the regional bank fallout here, uh, and I think it's accelerating. Um, contrary to what uh, Jamie Dimon said after uh, buying First Republic um, or parts of it, piece parts of it, um, we're seeing. We believe that the Fed, uh, because of the Fed interest rate hikes, a uh, twenty fold increase in one year that uh, deposits are leaving the system and moving into treasury funds. And treasury funds do nothing but sit there. Uh, they can't be uh, loaned out. You know, they can't encourage business activity. Uh, whereas deposits and banking system, the, the other side of those can be loans. And uh, so we have a feeling that we're in, we've started uh, in the early stages of a credit crunch that is going to be much more serious than I think most are expecting. Uh, I think that the regional bank index is beginning to telegraph that. It is. It has broken down, uh, which tells us deposits will continue to outflow until the Fed reverses its um, uh, position, until the Fed pivots. And we do see, you mentioned uh, the oil price. I think it has defied most people's expectations this year, especially everyone expecting China to come back uh, once it dropped its uh, zero COVID policy. Uh, and that has that has not happened. Uh, so something's going on out there that is uh, broader than even even the U.S. We do believe that the, that there is um, much more weakness in the global economy uh, than most uh, appreciated. And I would say. Um, it's interesting because China was um, uh, was shut down for so long. Uh, I think we all expected a little bit more than we've seen. Some consumer companies have seen some activity, but uh, the oil uh, market has not. And one of the things that is going on, it doesn't seem like Russia has um, has cut. It has been forced to cut production. And it seems like it's still selling its production at a discount. And now that is beginning to infect uh, the rest of the market. 